So, I have this atheist friend, Miss Florida Line. Smart woman. She's one of these smarty boots atheists. She likes to uh, she likes to challenge us, we in the Christian community, oftentimes on theology. Believe she was a former Christian herself, so she likes to ask penetrating questions on theological discussions. And sometimes it's fun to entertain some of her questions. So she asked me, she says, when Abraham was asked by God to murder his son, did Abraham consider it wrong? So, let's take a look at the story of Abraham in the Old Testament. Now, there's two, there's a few things that you, the reader, are supposed to notice right from the jump when you are reading the story of Abraham. Whether you believe the author of that story was a human being or whether you believe the author of that story was the Holy Spirit of God, there are, there are some takeaways that are, leap out at you that you are supposed, the author is trying to show you, get you to see. For, number one, the thing that God asks of Abraham is cray-cray. It is outside the boundaries, completely and utterly, of what we would consider normal request or a moral or a good request. It is a nutty thing to ask. It is completely outside the bounds of anything we would consider sane, even. Now, the author wants you to notice that. Point number two, Abraham does not hesitate. God says, kill me a son. Abraham says, done. When and where? Name the time, name the place. He's getting sick of that kid anyways. Well, he doesn't say that. But he doesn't hesitate. He says, you say do it, thy will be done. I will do it. Now, Abraham is also referred to often. This is a foundational figure of both the New and Old Testament. The Old and New Testament. This is a foundational figure. He's referred to often as a role model for me, the Christian. He's the father of many nations. He is an inheritor of the promise. I am told that Abraham believed God and it was credit to him as righteousness. I am supposed to learn from the example of Abraham. That is, he is referred to often in the New Testament as a role model for me, the Christian. And right then and there is part of the point. God says, kill me a son. Abraham says, done. I'm going to smoke that kid. I'm going to kill that kid. You, you say it, I do it. No ifs, ands, or buts, no question. Now that is the template of our relationship, the type of relationship we are supposed to have with God. God is sovereign and in command of us. Jesus says, not my will, but thine be done. Abraham said the same thing. Not my will, but thine be done. The, the story itself never goes into any wrestlings whatsoever over whether this is a moral or a correct thing to ask of Abraham. We notice that it's a crazy request and, you know, an immoral request, but the, but the, but the Bible doesn't discuss that fact. God says, kill me a son, Abraham does it. And later on, the, Abraham is referred to as the inheritor of the promise. The role model. So what is the implication therein? Well, first and foremost, the implication therein is that God himself transcends, stands outside the boundaries of good and evil, transcends any traditional concept of morality whatsoever. Even when we're talking about morality in human terms, like we, when we're trying to link it to the divine, like the divine command theory or the Rithropro dilemma, both of which are inapplicable in this particular case. There is no discussion whatsoever, none, of the morality of God's command. Kierkegaard is the first person who, who or as far as I know, the only person who addressed this in the way that, is, that it is asking itself to be considered. He called it the theological suspension of the ethical. In other words, God himself stands outside all human definitions of good and evil. He transcends the boundaries of good and evil. God says, do it, it is, it is to be done. Thy will be done. 
Now, later on in the, in the Bible, there are tons of arguments about the morality of God versus the morality of man. And it's crystal clear which side, which the Bible thinks is the, the proper moral being. And it ain't man. We, the Christian, are supposed to notice the seemingly irrational command of God, the seemingly immoral or insane command of God, and we are not supposed to flinch. We are just supposed to do. God decides whether it's moral or not. We don't. We just do. Now, I can hear Florida getting upset already. I can hear. I can hear. I can hear her voice. She's going, you're crazy. What's the difference between you and, you know, a suicide bomber? Because if God tells you to go blow up this, this building full of people, you're going to do it. Well, obviously I don't think God is going to ask me to do that. But the Bible is saying here, if God asks you to do it, you do it. You do not wrestle with, with the moral implications therein. We, do, we are not necessarily holding God to a human standard of morality in this particular scripture. Now... Going all the way back to the Garden of Eden, there's a long, there, there's more to it than just that. That's just the beginning. So that's where it starts. Did God know that it was wrong? Not necessarily, I mean, did Abraham know that it was wrong? It's not necessarily the right question. Abraham doesn't decide one way or the other. God says, do, Abraham does, period. That's the end of the discussion between God and man. That's the end of the discussion. There is no wrestlings with right or wrong. God says do, I do, period. Now, I will explain to her later on in a different video why, you know, I'm not going to become a, I'm going to strap on a suicide bomb and blow up a building. Because she's thinking that's where that's headed. So, that's all for now.